think, Hal? Do you like the ponytail look? I used to wear it this way when I was a cheerleader. Yeah, you were the prettiest cheerleader on the squad. You're sweet. It's a requirement for my job. Oh, right. Superior court judges are known for being sweet. Was your wife a cheerleader? Why? It's been almost three months. What do you mean? It's been almost three months since you talked about telling Barb. I know, I know. You said that you were going to tell her about us soon so we can be together, in public. I want to stop hiding how we feel about each other. Don't you? It's not that simple. Here's Evan Kilstrom. The Rams are ready to return the kickoff here. Sam Schnee, one of them. I would imagine they're going to keep the ball away from him. Uh, I think I'm going to go out by the pool. We're going to go get dinner soon. Okay. dressed and leave. Oh, hi. Are you okay? Yeah. Thank you so much again. Can I come in a moment? Please, just a moment. I guess. So, how come you're staying here? Are you traveling for business? Yep, I'm a sales rep. We got a new client in Arbor. How about you? We're just on our way to Reading to visit my aunt. We're from Nevada. Come here. Sit by me. No, 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 no. That's not a good idea. I'm a little uncomfortable with this. Why? I don't bite. At least, not much. No, please. You need to leave. Now. We have before the court the matter of the People versus John Harmon. The defendant is charged with attempted rape as well as sexual battery. How does the defendant plead? The defendant pleads not guilty, Your Honor. The defendant's plea is noted. Okay, I'll see you back here on the 29th. This is Ella's statement to the police. I want you to look it over and tell me what is accurate and what you contend is inaccurate or false. Then we'll talk about it. This is mostly one big lie. It doesn't even say anything about me saving her in the pool. Why is she doing this? I can't tell you why. I have no idea. For now, why isn't the question? 
I just need to know if this jogs your memory about anything that happened. Is there anything you haven't told me, or has your recollection changed at all? No. I know exactly what happened. Exactly what I told you the first time we met. You don't believe me? I'm sorry, but from my experience as a defense attorney, I've learned to be skeptical about everything I'm told. Or not told, for that matter. What are you talking about? You think I'm leaving something out? Don't take it personally. I'm just habitually skeptical. Do you think the jury would believe me? So you expect to testify? Of course. How else will the jury have a chance to hear my side? Well, I understand, but do you realize that if you testify, the jury will find out about your prior conviction? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You have a prior conviction for theft. That was 18 years ago. How would that come out? It will come out because the prosecution will bring it up. How is this relevant to this? It can be relevant to your veracity as a witness, whether you should be believed. The judge might consider it too remote in time versus its capacity for prejudice and rule it inadmissible and tell the jury to disregard it. But they will hear about it as they will about the charge of sexual battery. That charge was dropped. I wasn't convicted of that. Why would that come out? It will, believe me. And I will object and the judge will rule in your favor. But the jury will have heard it. You can't unring the bell. And my son will have heard it. Yes, unless you ask him to leave the courtroom while you testify. How can I do that? I taught him to always face the truth, no matter how unpleasant. How can I tell him to leave when I'm testifying? I understand, but do you realize that if you testify, all that will come out and will be in the jurors' minds, even if the judge tells them not to consider it? I'm fucked. I'm so fucked. So you might want to reconsider the plea bargain, plea to the sexual battery, and they drop the attempted rape. If I'm convicted of sexual battery, my life is over. I lose my job, my house, probably my wife and son too. And for what? Saving a white girl's life? No good deed goes unpunished. I got a good life. I love my family. I got a good job. It's just too fucking dangerous to be black in this country. It hurts. Really hurts. The Honorable Judge Hand presiding in the case of the State versus John Harmon. This is pretty slam dunk, right? Yep. It's a good first case for you, though. It's only one witness. No expert testimony, no physical evidence. I'm excited. Good. My first case as a prosecutor. <laughs> That's interesting. Judge Adams is in the gallery. That is interesting. I wonder what he's doing here today. Is it common for judges to sit down on other trials? Generally, no. Certainly not for something as simple as this. Well, maybe he's on a break and just decided he wanted to watch something without much drama. All right. Oh, we're ready to proceed. Counsel, are you ready to call your first witness? Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Ella Hansen. Ella, I'd like to start with a little background information. Can you please tell us your age? I'm 18. Do you currently live with your parents in Fallon, Nevada? Yes. Before the incident on October 15th, 2020, had you had any contact at all before with the defendant, John Harmon? No. Tell me, how was it that you came to be in his hotel room on that date? Well, as I was going to the ice machine to get some ice, uh, I walked past his door. His door opened and he called to me. So I turned around and he asked if I could help him with a computer issue that he was having. Um, so I went in and I sat down and he came over and he sat alongside me. The next thing I knew, his arms were around me and he was kissing my neck. He pushed me back and he was kissing my neck and trying to kiss me on my mouth. It all happened really fast and I was scared and I'm sorry, it just, upsets me when I start to talk about it. Uh, I understand, miss. Would you like to take a break to compose yourself? 
Yes, would that be okay? Sure. Uh, would 30 minutes be sufficient? All right, uh, let's take a break for uh, 30 minutes. Uh, on second thought, as late as it is, I think we should just adjourn for the rest of the day. We'll meet back here tomorrow morning, 1030. Court's adjourned. That was interesting. How so? In the statement she gave us in your office, she didn't say he asked her to help with his computer. She said he asked for help with his phone. Well, that's not a big deal. It's a fairly minor inconsistency. Yes, I agree. But in her original statement to the police that evening, she didn't mention a phone or a computer. And this is the first time I'm hearing anything about going for ice. Originally, she said she was just heading out to the pool. Well, maybe her memory is just getting better. <laughs> Judge Judy says if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. Well, that is true. Is his computer still in evidence? I believe so. I'm going to pick that up and look through it later. And... Would it be okay for me to ask Ella a couple questions while she's here? Sure. Are you doing okay? You seem pretty upset back there. Yeah, I'm fine now. Thanks. You're welcome. So, I heard you say that he asked for help with his computer. Mm-hmm. Um, when you went into the room, did you see a computer anywhere? Um, yeah. A laptop. On his bed. And was it open or closed? Open. Did he ask you to look at it at all? Um, yeah, when he sat on the bed alongside me. Okay, and um, did you notice anything on the screen? Um, I couldn't see really well. It looked like there might be, like, dirty pictures. Like, from a web page or photos? Um, I don't really remember. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> that helps a lot. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow, and I hope you get a good night's sleep. Thanks. Me too. This is all so stressful. <laughs> yes, I understand. Hi, hon. Fine, I, I just want to let you know that um, I'm heading out for a bit. Be back around seven. It's related to the trial. I'm uh, gonna go visit the motel where the assault took place. Yeah, that'd be great. Salad sounds good. I got some pasta sauce from the other night. We'll heat it up. Be good. Okay, see you then. Can I help you? I'm from the district attorney's office. I'm here to investigate the incident that happened on October 15th. Oh, yes, I remember. I was working that evening. Here is my card. Okay, to uh, ask a couple questions? Sure, if I can help. Do you have a map of the hotel grounds? Right here. Where was John Harmon staying? That would be room 112. And the Hansons? Room 126, right here. How many rooms were occupied that night? Five. And um, what were those? 102, 106, and 126. Could I see the registration cards? Sure. Here they are. 
So this one paid with cash. Yes. Do you happen to remember what they look like? Yes. A man and a woman. He was in his 50s, medium height. She was a blonde, uh, 40s. Um, was this the man? I think so. Can I take a look at the rooms where um, Mr. Harmon and this fellow stayed? Sure. I'll call one of my staff to show you those rooms. That's the room where the fellow and his lady stayed, right? Yeah, that's the room they had. They didn't stay, though. Really? No, they left before the police arrived. Before the police arrived? Are you sure? Yeah, they came in two cars. Both left before the police showed up. Didn't come back, either. Left in two cars? Left before the police showed up? I guess that's a bit odd. Not as much as you'd think. Hmm. Let's go to their room now. Is that the room we were just in? Right. It doesn't look like you can see into the room at all from here. Would that be different if it were later and the lights were on? No, not really. When the guest arrives, the drapes are partially open, but even if they were fully open, you couldn't see anything from this angle. Oh, I guess you can't. Thanks. No problem. Always glad to help. Something is definitely fishy here. Judge Adams has been in the back this entire trial. It would seem that he is in court as a fail-safe. What does that mean? Well, he doesn't want to get involved, unless absolutely necessary. That means whatever he knows must be a game-changer. Probably something that would clearly result in an acquittal. Something worth risking everything for. Which means you're probably prosecuting an innocent man. Yeah, but why would she accuse him if he didn't do anything? hard to say, to hide something else? Like why she went to his room? It's not the first time for that sort of thing. Probably not. Definitely not. In 1931, the Scottsboro trial, nine black teens aged 13 to 19 were accused of raping two white women on a train in Alabama. Some surmise that they were prostitutes who um, were avoiding prosecution. But in any case, eight were convicted and sentenced to death. They weren't executed, but multiple year sentences were served by many of the accused. In 2013, the governor of Alabama officially exonerated and pardoned all nine. God, sounds like a horror story. And already a nightmare for the defendant in my case. He's probably hoping the defendant's testimony would be sufficient to get him acquitted, huh? The defendant's not likely to testify. He has a prior for shoplifting and was charged with sexual battery when he was 18. He expects we know this and we'll get it in front of the jury and his family. Would you do that? I don't know if Sam will or, or not. I mean, winning is paramount for him. He's not likely to leave a bullet in the chamber, so to speak. Sounds a bit underhanded. Welcome to the world of trial lawyering. Hope you never like that. Me too. I don't want to fight like that. But you know what they say. 95% of lawyers give the other 5% a bad name. I hope you stay in that 5%. I'll try, but this whole thing stinks. Yeah, it's uh, not just your case. What do you mean? <laughs> I think your spaghetti sauce is burning. Yikes! <laughs> 
Miss Hansen, I'd like to ask you about your activities that evening at the motel before the alleged assault occurred. In one statement, you said you were going to get some ice when you assert Mr. Harmon asked you to come into his room. In another statement, you said you're on your way to the pool area. Which was it, Miss Hansen? Uh, I really don't remember now. What difference does it make? What's important is that he asked me to come into his room. Well, when you give conflicting versions regarding one aspect of your activities, it raises a doubt as to whether or not you're telling the truth about other aspects of your story. You understand that. Yeah, but I'm not a liar if that's what you're implying. Be that as it may, Miss Hansen, at any time after arriving at the motel, did you go to the pool area? No. That's it. Something happened at the pool. Objection, Your Honor. The pool is not in evidence. Overruled. The pool is not in evidence? What does that even mean? Is there some strategic or tactical purpose to that question that I am missing? Yes, it was to establish that the assistant prosecutor is an idiot. Then, well done. As I was saying, in one version of your story, you said you were on your way to the pool area. Did you ever actually go to the pool area? No. You're sure? Yes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Uh, you may take your seat, Miss Hanson. Wait, I have a question. Jill, what are you doing? Just one question. Okay. Well, Ella, it seems like the defense is going on a fishing expedition, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, asking about going to the pool in October when the weather is cool and the water's cold. Why would you do that? Lawyers, huh? I, I am curious about just one thing, Ella. Do you know how to swim? Um, no, I don't. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Right, we'll now take a 45-minute recess. Meet back here at uh, 1 p.m. What the hell was that about? Let's go to your office. I'll explain. <sighs> well, you better have a damn good reason for what you just did out there, Jill. This isn't some theatrical play we're conducting. This is a criminal trial. I have a reputation in this county, and you're making it look <laughs> like I chose a nut for an assistant, and that I'm not in charge of this case. What's going on? I keep asking myself, why has Judge Adams been sitting in the back throughout this trial? I checked, and as far as I can tell, Judge Adams hasn't had any contact with the defendant, or Ella, or any one of their families. This is a nothing trial. Why is he here? I also checked his calendar. He's made himself unavailable for any case this week. He's even postponed an ongoing trial that's set to start today. So, on a hunch, yesterday evening I went to the motel. Really? I showed the clerk a picture of Judge Adams. He said that Judge Adams was there that night with another woman. They arrived in separate cars and left just before the police arrived. I checked their respective rooms. From Judge Adams' room, you can't see into John's room and vice versa. But guess what you can see from both rooms? The pool. Exactly. From either room, you get a full view of the pool. Why did the defense ask if Ella went to the pool? Something happened at the pool. Something major. Something that convinced Judge Adams that John is innocent, even though he couldn't see whether anything happened in the room. 
And that's why he's there, as a failsafe, just in case John is convicted. He doesn't want to come forward unless he has to. I mean, the exposure could ruin his career, his marriage. Who knows? Okay. That theory makes sense. I mean, I wondered a bit myself why Judge Adams is here. But it's just a theory. You don't really have any proof. When I asked Ella if she could swim and she said no, I looked back at Judge Adams. He looked right at me and nodded. Okay, he nodded. What can you really conclude from that? It's not proof. We don't need proof. If we have a doubt, we shouldn't be prosecuting. We can't ethically ask the jury to find him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt if we don't feel that way ourselves. I'm not just going to walk away from a slam dunk conviction because of some un unsubstantiated theory you have, Jill. I don't do that. I win cases. I don't run from them. Is this just about winning? What about integrity and, and ethics? What about your daughter? What, what would she think if she knew that you knowingly prosecuted a man that you believe is innocent? I don't know that I believe he's innocent, for one. And two, don't bring my daughter into this. That's inappropriate. I'm sorry. I... You're right. I just... I'm... I'm having some trouble with this. Look, we've... Um... We got about 20 minutes. I'm gonna grab some lunch and I'll see you back in the courtroom. Hi, Zoe. This is Jill Foster, your dad's assistant attorney in the trial this week. Hi. Are you busy? I have an idea. Oh, look, Zoe's here. That's a first. I wonder what she's doing here. I invited her. You invited her? What for? I heard she likes fireworks. All right. Thanks for your patience. Are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Is it the defense? Excuse me, Your Honor. Jill. Yes? The state moves to dismiss all charges against the defendant. What are you doing? And may I add, with a touch of irony, with prejudice. What's going on? I gather, Counselor, that you do not agree. My apologies. Your Honor, I agree with the motion. The state moves to dismiss all charges against the defendant with prejudice. This is a bit irregular. And I hope that the allusion to prejudice is not intended to apply to the handling of this matter by this court. Absolutely not, Your Honor. Absolutely not. I accept your assurances, Ms. Foster. Now, as to the state's motion, the court has some discretion to take the matter under review. However, Mr. McGregor has appeared before this court many times, and I've always found his judgment to be impeccable. So, if you truly are in favor of this motion... 100%, Your Honor. 100%. All right, then. I can't imagine the defense has an objection. None whatsoever, Your Honor. I will therefore grant the motion. 
All charges against the defendant are dismissed with prejudice. And therefore, the defendant is free to go. I will inform the jury. Ella! Ella! Well played. Well played. Judge Adams just left. <laughs> you were going to make one hell of a prosecutor. I'm going to go say hi to Zoe. <laughs> <laughs>